Months ago, I made a demo with the purpose of extracting the deep map in order to use it in a particle system. The solution didn't work very well. It required a mesh, a shader, a viewport, and besides all that, the viewport trains the floating values in the range of 0 to 1, so I have to encode them. Thanks to the compositor effects, now I can extract the deep map directly from the camera without using an intermediate mesh, using the new texture to DRD. I also don't have to rely on the viewport. If I take the camera out of the viewport, it still works, but I have to update it manually. The viewport is only used to give an exact size to the texture that the camera gets. And to set the update mode, so it refresh the depth map all the time. The set to be simple. There is the display plane, a viewport with the camera and the scene, and the mesh to display the depth map has a very simple shader that only has the function to display a texture, but the texture I assign is the new 2D RD texture. As we can see in the documentation, this texture allows us to work with the rendering device. This means that we can modify it in a compute shader. So also in compositor effects, it has the RID property that we can modify in the compute shader. When I update the scene, it works again. Now let's see the main script. It has to export variables that contain the display plane and the camera. They are assigned here. And this is the rendering device. Now I create a new texture format with these parameters. I also assign a size and I am using this hard coded value. So it could be the size of the viewport, for example. These are the permissions to use a texture. We have three of them in this case. And now we create the texture and get the low level identifier RID. Now I get a 2D RD texture from the shader inside the plane. and I assign the air ID to the texture. Up to this point, we have an empty texture, so I'm going to get the compositor effect of the camera from the compositor array and assign the air ID to it, so it will be processed inside the compositor effect. Now, let's check the compositor effect to extract the deep map of the camera. First, I have to class fields that I'm going to set from outside of the class, the target texture and the texture size that is hard-coded again. This is the class constructor and this is the stage in the rendering pipeline. This is going to run in a treat and this is like a low-level signal to free the resources and this is important because in the case of the deep map, I need to use a sampler. Here is the sampler that I am using, and this is because I just can't copy directly the deep buffer. I have to use a sampler. This is not like the velocity map. That was very easy. And I don't want an interpolation. That's why I am using the nearest filter. So I check the rendering stage and I get the buffers that is the important data, of course. And this is the way the computer shader is going to work, the groups. And this is the sampler uniform that requires the sampler and the debuffer, both of them. And here is the sampler, and then the depth buffer. And this is the texture where I'm going to copy the depth buffer, and it works with the texture 
to the ERD that comes from outside, of course. And here I pass extra parameters that is just the texture size. And I have to multiply by four because it's the size in bytes of float values. I am just going to move this comment because uh, this is where I send the parameter and here I create the buffer. So this is the binding. And here I send all the uniforms in the same set as you can see, it's an array of uniforms. And here is the compute shader. So it has a first the sampler uniform that contains the sampler and the depth buffer. Then this is the image where I'm going to copy the depth buffer, the output texture. And here are the parameters. So as you can see, it's a back to, but in the outside, uh, you can see that these uh, parameters are passed as floats. So the data, the data doesn't have any structure. But here, I can structure the data in any way I want. Here are the integer coordinates, the normalized coordinates from zero to one because I divide uh, by the resolution that comes from outside from the parameters. And I sample the depth buffer. I am not using the image load here. And finally, I store the depth in the output image. And this code corrects the gamma of the depth buffer. So in, this is just in case you need it. And finally, the subviewport that just requires the size that is the same as the parameters I defined before and the update mode of the viewport to always. So the camera updates the buffer texture all the time. Otherwise, the texture remains static as you can see. So now it works. And this is the end.